videos of me <laughs> recording outside are becoming increasingly rare. At least the non-train related videos outside are becoming rare. I think in this building particularly, I think it's been it's probably been six months since the last time I filmed outside this building. <clears throat> anyway, I was just gonna make a really quick video today addressing another misconception about what the Bible teaches. Like there are some that think that after Jesus died on the cross, he descended into hell. And there are two theories behind that. He descended into hell as part of the reconciliation or whatever. And then there's another saying that he, you know, gave people who were in hell another chance. Well, this is not the truth because salvation only comes through Christ. That's true. But uh, the people who were in hell, they, they, they had their chance when they were living. And, uh, but Jesus didn't even go to, and didn't even go to hell, period. He experienced the pain of hell on the cross. See what happens. See, hell is a state of total separation from God. People, people who are unsaved are unsaved because they want nothing to do with God. Whether they, whether they have this mindset consciously or, or not, like they, they want nothing to do with God. And in a way, they are getting what they want, but it's still a punishment because you're separated from God forever. And, you know, this state of total separation from God is a state of suffering. I do believe there's little literal suffering in hell. I do believe that there's fire because that's what the Bible mentions. But that fire hurts so much worse, I imagine, knowing that you're separated from God forever. You see, Jesus was taking our punishment for our sin on the cross, experiencing the very wrath of God. See, that's, you know, what hell is. It's God's wrath on you know, sinners. It's their punishment. You see, in Matthew chapter 27, going over to verse 46, at, and at about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, Jesus was experiencing that punishment, taking our place on the cross. He was being punished because he bore the weight of our sin on himself. See, Jesus was experiencing separa total separation from God on the cross. This was prophesied in the book of Elijah, chapter 53, I believe. Oh no, it was in chapter 54, verse 7. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. This was a prophecy about Christ. He died taking the punishment for our sin. He was experiencing that separation from God. But it was only for that moment while he was atoning for our sins, that we might be made righteous. Jesus went to heaven as he said to that thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus would not have said it if it were not so, because Jesus is God. God himself bore our punishment. Because he and the Father are one. And lastly, I want to flip to 2 Corinthians if I can do it with one hand. Second Corinthians, and I believe 521. And I skipped it. Yeah. Second Corinthians 521. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus went to heaven before he arose on the third day. He did not spend those three days in hell. He had no reason to. His work on the cross was finished. He completely atoned for our sins. He completely took our punishment. 
He experienced that separation from God. That's why he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus took all that punishment. He was forsaken for our sins, but only for a moment. Because God raised him from the dead on the third day. And Jesus was with him in paradise. That is to say, heaven. This was, uh, you know, as proof of our justification. Everything Jesus did was literal and symbolic. Jesus did go to heaven after he died on the cross. And he did literally rise again on the third day. But it was also symbolic. Because he took our punishment, we were justified. It's kind of like when you're in court and someone pays your fine, the judge can let you go. Now, of course, this depends on the severity of the crime. This is earth court we're talking about after all. But even the things in our everyday life is symbolic. Because Jesus paid our fine, God the judge can let us go. He can have mercy on us. He can be just and merciful at the same time. Our punishment was taken for us. But not only that, we get to be with the one who took it for us forever in heaven. Because he rose from the, third, from the grave on the third day, proving that we were justified. And now we can have assurance that, like that thief on the cross next to him, we will be with him in paradise. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you in the next one, God be willing. God bless you all.